Have you ever wondered why some surgeries go very quickly or some surgeons are very fast while others are not? Have you ever noticed that some surgeons are better, whatever that means, like, but what it means to be a good surgeon or a fast surgeon is something that interests me tremendously because I think of surgery as an art form and I realize that there's no right or wrong or good or bad or best or better or fast or faster or slow. So the question really becomes, how do you achieve efficiency in surgery? That means you're still trying to accomplish your goals of surgery, but if you wanna get faster or better, what does that even mean? What is surgical efficiency? And that's the question I wanna get into in this video. So when I think about a surgical procedure, I like to think of it in stages. So I like to imagine different phases of the procedure and the surgery as a composition of those different stages. So as an example, let's think about a single level T lift, right? A transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion. I like to think of that as a period of exposure, a period of instrumentation placement, a period of decompression, the inner body work, and then the rod placement, and then arthrodesis, and then closure. So you could imagine that sequence of stages. And if you were to look at a timeline, you have a timeline like number one, there's exposure, then number two, there's decompression, then number three, there's instrumentation, et cetera. So what really makes a surgeon efficient is the ability to kind of achieve those phases or kind of adequate progress in those phases more quickly, right? So think about what that means then. If we were to break this down and look at a single part of a procedure. Let's just say we're looking at exposure, right? You, what you find with this, if you look at progress over time, is that it, the curves tend to look like this. And there is some like, you know, perfect degree of exposure. And let's say this is 100%. And on some level, you never really get there, right? You asymptotically approach the perfect or the complete exposure. Now, you might get a surgeon who looks a little bit better, and is like faster, you might get somebody who's a little bit slower, but the shape of the curve is similar. And I don't find that there's a tremendous amount of variability, having worked with probably 50 or 60 surgeons at this point, I don't necessarily think that some are wildly more effective in terms of progress per unit time with any specific maneuver. But now let's imagine it one step further. Let's imagine surgery as a composition, right? So I'll draw a kind of a bigger timeline here. And so you look again at time and you look at progress, and now we're looking at these stacked up. What I find is that if you just look at exposure, for example, and it looks a bit like this, and at some point you kind of make less progress per unit time than you think, the difference really is when do you switch gears, so to speak, and go to the next stage, which is placement of instrumentation? Is it here? And if you imagine, maybe this is like, 45 minutes after starting the procedure, is this where you start? Because the next phase will have a curve that looks kind of similar. You know what I mean? And then beyond that, let's say you switch here and you go to the decompression stage of it. What I find is that if you were to kind of change gears very late, that makes you fairly inefficient. The question is, do you really need to get to 99%? What if you go here and you're at like 90%? Or if you go here and you're at 80% and you switch gears? So this is again, the exposure, this is gonna be instrumentation. What I find is that a really efficient surgeon is an efficient that makes pretty good progress per unit time, but then switches gears and maybe switches gears and they're only 80% exposed and suddenly they're putting instrumentation in and then they switch and suddenly they're, putting, they're doing their decompression and the curve ends up being a lot faster. They end up doing a lot bigger surgery a lot faster, not because they're any faster with any given maneuver, but because they are able to change gears faster. And as you're practicing surgery and as you're doing surgery, kind of recognizing that this is the shape of the curve and constantly pushing yourself to number one, make more progress per unit time, but also kind of testing yourself a little bit and saying, do I really need to get to 90%? What if I go to 80%? I'll fine tune it a little bit when I'm actually putting the screws in. Same thing, once the screws are in, do I really need to go to like 100% for every one of these stages? Not that you're not aspiring to perfection. That's another video that I make all together on what it means to aspire to perfection. But really when you're looking at progress for unit time, trying to find the sweet spot for you so that you can be efficient, accomplish the goals effectively, and still save time for you and for the patient, I think is really powerful.